All right. It is 7 o'clock. Are we uh, recording? Yes. All right. It is 7 o'clock. This is the Minnetrista City Council meeting for July 17th, 2023. I'm going to call the meeting to order, and the first order of business is, would you please stand and join me for Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So thank you all for being here this evening and joining us and also those that will be watching or listening later on in YouTube. Um, first order, I'd like to make introductions. I am Lisa Whalen. I am the mayor. To my left are council members Kathleen Refkin, Anne McGregor, Peter Vickery, Claudia Lacey, and then staff present this evening is with WSB, our city engineer, Allison Fowski. Our director of public works is Gary Peters, and next to him is Allie Palfus, our director of administration. And then um, behind Allie, we have our city clerk, Don Motzko. Next to me, to my right, we have our city administrator, Jasper Krugel. And then we have um, uh, Finance Director Brian Grimm. David Abel is our Community Development Director. Sarah Sansala is um, with Kennedy and Graven, our City Attorney. And then we have our Chief of Police, Paul Falls. So with that, are there any changes or additions to the agenda? Hearing none, is there a motion to approve the agenda as presented? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Refkin. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. McGregor. Any further questions, discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes 5-0. So next on the agenda is special presentations. We have Melissa this evening with us uh, with Midco, and she's going to be giving us an update. Thank you very much for joining us and giving us this update. It's very exciting. Yes, I'm excited to be here. Thank Good. you guys all for having me, and I think I can... Control this. Um, I think. Yeah, there we go. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you guys all again for having me. Having me. My name is Melissa Wolf. I'm the government relations manager with Midco, and I appreciate the opportunity to be here tonight. Um, I'm really excited to share kind of an update on our project that we started with you guys in February of 2022. Um, at that time, my counterpart um, Andrew Curley, who's our director of government relations, came in and, and told you a lot about Midco. So I will kind of skip all of that, and I will just do a brief recap of. Um, kind of what we agreed to in February of 2022 and where we stand in July of 2023. Um, so first, before I get into all the, the good details, I do want to say thank you to, um, from all of our teams at Midco to the City of Minnetrista, the Mayor, City Council, and all of your staff. Um, we were thrilled to be able to partner with the city on this project. Um, we're thrilled to continue to expand in this area. And as you guys know, this project would not have been possible without your contribution. Um, it's not something that we take lightly, knowing that you know that's that's funds that go directly to the city. Um, and I hope that you will, as you will see in this presentation, um, that this was a, a well worth investment by the city for your residents. Um, and again, I just want to say thank you to the council staff. Um, I've worked very closely with Ali over the last year, and I know our construction teams have worked very closely with your public works and engineering and. Um, again, as you'll see in this presentation, they had just glowing things to say about the city of Minnetrista, and it really made um, this project, uh, it was a collaboration and a smooth process, and it made it a very efficient and effective project. Um, so jumping really briefly back into what we discussed in February of 22, uh, 2022, and what you see on the presentation here is what we initially presented to the city was 466 unserved and underserved, underserved passings uh, in the city of Minnetrista. That was based on you know, Melissa data, which is what we use to identify. Um, it's, it's basically what is recognized as U.S. postal address, or addresses by the U.S. Post Office. So it's kind of a best guess as what we think uh, was in this project area that was remaining on and underserved in the city of Minnetrista. We estimated that total project costs at that time would be 2.6 million. The agreement that we came to with Minnetrista was 400,000, capped at 15.5% of total project costs, and then $2.2 uh, $2 million contribution from Midco. We did have an amendment um, later in spring of 2022. There were 20 additional un and underserved passings in Minnetrista that we found. Uh, the total project cost for those 20 passings um, was $126,059. 
Um, we agreed to a $52,000 financial contribution from the city with Midco picking up um, $74,059. So total combined for, for 2022, what we came up with with the project was 486 un- and underserved passings for a total of $2.7 million with a $452,000 contribution from the city and $2.3 million from Midco. I'll do both here. So jumping forward to July of 2023, um, Midco began construction in the city of Minnetrista in late fall of 2023, or I'm sorry, 2022, and we completed construction in the city of Minnetrista in Ju- on June 26th of 2023. We had five project or what we call pond areas uh, within that larger project area. Um, we were able to complete underground construction in two of those five areas by the end of 2022. And the remaining three, we did have to to come back and do all of the underground construction for as soon as we were able to um, after a thaw and snow melting in 2023. We did see some delays in construction in 2022 due to some ongoing supply chain issues that have since, you know, pretty much leveled out, thankfully. Um, and then we saw a delay in start of construction in 2023 due to the never-ending winter. Um, we were about a month behind where we usually get started in um, in spring. But what we did then is, as soon as we were able to get out here, we had multiple crews working in Minatrista in both May and June to finish uh, underground construction in those three remaining project areas and to start fiber splicing in all five project areas. We Midco placed uh, 177,000 feet of fiber infrastructure within that project area in the city of Minatrista. It was a fiber to the home design capable of five gigabit symmetrical speeds and service launch began on June 5th of this year, 2023, with our last project area service launch being June 26th of 2023. In total, what we did come up with is, um, because as I had mentioned, we um, estimate project uh, with Melissa data information, but it's actually once we drive out, design, and fully strand a project area that we know how many homes are actually included in that project area. So of what we um, estimated, there were 461 passings in that project area. 446 are current homes and residents, and there are 15 vacant lots that will be serviceable if a home is ever, or any type of structure is ever built on those lots. Um, we had 249 pre-registrations, meaning residents contacted us to pre-register for services prior to anything being launched, which is a very large amount. This last line right here I wanted to include that's directly from our construction team and I will just read that the city of Minnetrista was excellent to work with on permitting. In addition, the city allowed Midco to lease space for a temporary material storage yard, which was a key component for efficient construction efforts by keeping materials close to the build area. Mm -hmm. So thank you guys again for that collaboration on this part of the project. And again to Allie um, and so many other staff who've been key on on making sure the project um, was on schedule and just a constant conduit of information and communication between the city and Midco. So um, what I'm really uh, excited to to say today is uh, as of July 2023, our final costs for construction have come in and they've come in under budget. That's always a great thing. So total project costs, um, again, I'll go back on my on my sheet were originally 2.7 million is what we estimated. It came in at 2.3 million. With that cap of 15.5% of the city's contribution, it ended up being for that first area, $350,752. And then with the addition of those 20 homes of $52,000, the final uh, miniaturistic contribution will be $402,732, as opposed to the $452,000. Always good to hear. Yes. (laughs) And then, um, and actually what I did want to note there is um, we will be providing um, Allie and the council with a full breakdown of that summary of costs and reimbursement for labor, plant, distribution, water. I mean, you will see a, a full breakdown of what those, uh, what bucket those costs go into um, along with an invoice before. Um, and certainly if there are any questions um, after that, um, please feel free to reach out. We're, we're happy to work with you on that. Um, and then what I'm really excited about on the next 
slide to tell you. And actually, um, the information that I have on here is now out of date. On a whim, I um, so I got this information last week on um, you know what we have for active customers, schedule install, that type of thing. Um, on a whim, I uh, texted our general manager for field operations before I came here tonight to get just a quick update. He his team oversees all of the field techs that do the installs um, in the state of Minnesota, and so he gave me a quick update. And these numbers are uh, already out of date, um, yeah. only a week old. So we are six weeks since our first uh, launch of service. And on the left here, apologies, you'll see that is the final as-built map of uh, our project area in the city of Minnetrista. Um, the light shaded red is our service area. All of the, the dark red lines are our fiber um, and fiber drops to each home. So six weeks, six weeks since our first launch, and I'm just gonna read the numbers since what is up there is uh, already out of date. We have 71 active customers. Uh, you can disregard the work orders. We have 89 that uh, residents that have a scheduled install date and then 16 in the system to be scheduled. Um, so what I wanted to uh, really make sure that the, the council knew tonight that um, of the, you know, assuming that the 16 that are in the system to be scheduled uh, follow through and, and um, do connect to service, we'll be at 176 active customers of 446 possible, which puts us at about 39% penetration or take rate. Uh, and just to put into context, uh, normally for this type of build in city, we would look to have a 43% take rate by the end of year three. And we are at six weeks post launch. So Alrighty. again, this was a very needed and beneficial investment that we are thankful that we got to be a part of. Um, so just jumping down really quickly, again, to remind you of our service offerings, if you do get questions from residents, um, with fiber, everything is symmetrical. All our lowest speed offering is 100 over 100, which is $30 a month, up to five gig symmetrical speeds. We are also a participating provider in the affordable connectivity program, if you have residents that do qualify for that, or um, the Lifeline program. Okay. Oh, just two uh, two other things I did want to mention. Again, um, just you know, reassurance that obviously uh, you know we take very seriously and uh, strive to excel in our customer service experience. So that you know your initial investment just you know goes beyond just the expansion and uh, connection to your residents, but that we are um, working to take care of your residents after the fact. Um, as evident, we do, uh, we have been ranked number one in customer satisfaction for residential internet service in our region the last two years in a row by J.D. Power. Uh, we do have local service technicians and teams uh, that live in this area uh, that can respond very quickly should there be any issues. And then we have business specific field techs uh, for business needs and then that 24-7 support from our operations centers in both Fargo, North Dakota and Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Um, and then you can get in touch with them, you know, by several different means, whether that's chat, social media, email, phone. Um, so just, uh, again, that uh, we're, we're hoping to take care of your residents even after, like I said, this initial investment for access. Um, and then lastly, what I wanted to mention is our community involvement to make sure that you guys know that we do have a Midco Grant Foundation. So if there's anything in your community that would ever be a good opportunity for you to apply for a Midco Foundation grant, we have given back to the communities we serve for the last 30 years. It's over 5.6 million that we've been given back to communities and we have grant rounds twice. Twice a year we'll have another one coming up um, at the end of summer with announcements in fall. Um, typically, it's you know about fifteen hundred to three thousand dollars per grant, but you know whether that's a fire department or um, any organization within your community that might benefit, please keep us in mind. The application is very simple, and it's on our uh, it's on our website. Do you um, sponsor events? We do. Yeah. Well, we have one coming up, so I'm going to put in a plug. We have our very first holiday tree lighting event, and we are looking for sponsorships. So it would be an opportunity for you as well to, to get some publicity and recognition. And we are very, very, very thankful that you are here. So um, 
maybe you, you can give us your information yeah. so we can yeah, apply. A great segue to the second sponsorships. We, we participate in several uh, you know, different ways and, and events and opportunities in the communities we serve, and that sounds like a great opportunity. So yeah. absolutely, I will connect with you guys okay. on um, the tree lighting event. So that thank you very much. We'd love to have you sponsor us and, and partic- be there. So. Yes, absolutely. But um, I just want to say thank you to Midco, of course, and um, also to our staff. Staff, um, Ali and for um, Gary Peters uh, for hosting your your um, equipment in yes. our public works. Uh, that's <laughs> excellent. Um, but also to our council. Um, I know Peter and Claudia were not here, but Ann McGregor and I spearheaded this. And of course, uh, much support by by Kathleen Refkin and our other two former council members and our staff. And the other person I do think we need to recognize is Kevin Anderson, who is our Canada County Commissioner. Yeah. They also participated. So this was really truly a collaboration between a number of different organizations and we really appreciate it and I know our residents super appreciate it and now we can they can afford to have their businesses and office out of their home where they were not able to do that before so this is really exciting news we're very excited to have you here do you want to expand <laughs> <laughs> Initial, um, our initial uh, project here in Minnesota, of course, you know, we're looking to pick those on an underserved, but we're always open to conversations about okay. other opportunities. Yeah. So absolutely, okay. um, we'll continue to, to discuss. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys so much. Yeah. Unless there's any other questions, I'll, uh, I'll let you guys get, uh, get All right. back to your agenda. Thank you. Thank, Thank, you, you, very Thank you very much. Thank you. All right. Um, next on the agenda, then under special presentations, uh, Brian Grimm, I believe you have a financial, a second quarter financial update for us. Yes, uh, thanks, Madam Mayor and Council. So um, I do have the uh, regular, I guess, six month uh, second quarter of the 2023 update. Um, as you can see on the uh, memo on page three, I think everything's tracking pretty well where revenues are about you know at 49 percent there and we did get our last bit of first half taxes in in early july so we're even sitting a little better there on the revenue side um a couple items you probably noticed there is that the building permit revenue i think i even mentioned earlier in the year was tracking well but now we've even had some of the uh, permits come in on the uh between the first six months of the year on the commercial um type projects so uh and, and even the single family homes seem to be doing pretty well and staying pretty steady, so uh, residential, so that's uh, a, a positive. And then um, I think even in the first quarter, I mentioned that some of the uh, drug task force revenues that's been coming in a little higher than what we had uh, uh, received in, in previous years. So I guess I can you know, thank Chief Falls for that. I guess <laughs> his, <laughs> that we're part of the drug task force, I guess so. Um, and then on the ex- expenditure side, I think, you know, no, we had talked about that in the first quarter that, um, I don't know, I think we sort of joked that um, it can't snow until January 1st because our snow ice budget is uh, pretty much uh, <laughs> over already. But obviously we will, if in November, December, we will go out and plow or Gary will <laughs> have the plows out there. But, um, you know, even there we're sitting at about, you know, 53%, which some things we've paid for the full year, um, such as our assessing services and stuff like that. So, um, I don't know if anyone has any questions. I guess the only other point probably on the cash and investments, some um, Page, as everyone probably saw, we did have our bond proceeds arrive in April, so we do have the uh, money sitting out there, both in the uh, uh, the capital projects fund as well as the water funds, a little higher because you know a because couple million of the project is for the water main in that uh, mm-hmm. Morning View area. So, otherwise, I think those were the highlights. So, I guess if there's any other questions from council, we take them now. So, council, Claudia, Peter, you're you're kind of new, so if any questions, no, no, okay. Right. How's uh, revenue for the water fund for quarter two? Did it come in on where we expected it? Lower, higher? Yeah, I think yeah, right now, and it's um, just the way we track it during the year. It's more on a cash basis. So we're, the, what we build at the end of June, and we're still getting in, and, we're, and it seems to be coming in pretty well. But just looking quarter over quarter, it's it, it doesn't seem to be the big anomaly like obviously what we saw last year during during our third quarter. But um, I think it's. Um, within the parameters where I expected it to be so far. So, yeah. All right, then. Anything else? All right. Uh, Thank you, and uh, Brian, for your work and for this presentation. So we will move on now to persons to be heard. We have two um, gentlemen with us this evening, um, Lyle Shaw and Jerry Scard. So 
uh, come up to the podium. They would like to talk to us about the men's shed at the Gillespie Center. And since there's two of them, I said they could have a little more than three minutes. They could have six minutes. And, and if need be, if it's okay with the council, if they need a few extra, I think we can give them that too. So I want to thank you, um, gentlemen, for joining us this evening. And Thank you, Go ahead. Madam Mayor. We usually take about 25 minutes. <laughs> well, we're going to limit you a little less than that. <laughs> uh, and Minco is actually a type of company, as you learn about Minshed, that we put on our agenda. Uh, Minshed is uh, sponsored by uh, Leslie Center locally within West Tonka. And it's a group, anybody that shows up to a meeting is a member, and we have no fees. Um, it's a group of seniors and retirees where we just meet once a week for coffee, and we talk about different ideas, things going on in the community. We schedule uh, speakers, and we take tours, and we have projects. Jerry will discuss a couple of the projects um, briefly. And so uh, within West Tonka, we're looking for ways to promote men's shed and to increase our membership. And it's very difficult sometimes uh, getting seniors in a strictly a men's organization uh, of getting uh, men out of the house and to a meeting and at least involved and engaged in some type of activity which uh, translates to some type of an activity for the community. And that's why we uh, have an outreach program. And because of the, the closeness of uh, the communities, uh, Minatrista was one of the areas that, that we're looking at. And because we do actually, uh, we were uh, working on one project not far from here. Actually, it was down 92, uh, uh, completing a project. So we do have members in various organiz uh, parts of the community. So what we're trying to do is to uh, gain membership in the outlying communities that make up West Tonka. So, uh, the purpose of choosing a Metatrista is in fact that what we're asking for is for space to have meetings within Metatrista. And uh, it won't be a, a monetary burden, we'll supply coffee or whatever it takes but we're just asking for space and for advertisement in your newsletter. And that would maybe will get the word out to people that are in the community. Um, I'll kind of let Jerry. He's, well, Jerry's our project guy. You know, um, we have projects and you don't have to work on the project. You can actually come and criticize the other. She <laughs> <laughs> works on it. I criticize. <laughs> no. Well, you, you've all been to one. Been to one. Excuse me. You've all been to the restaurant in the morning and then see a bunch of guys have a coffee. They're not there for the coffee. <laughs> so we do that, and we take a step further when we do activities. Or we maybe we'll visit a museum, we carpool there. So we're taking our relationships to a higher level than just sitting around having coffee at McDonald's or something. Mm -hmm. So that's the purpose. And uh, the men's shed was actually started uh, when the Australian government recognized uh, citizens of the Outback, they recognized health and mental, physical and mental health issues. So they started the men's shed. And I don't know. Guys are kind of different. No, we, we don't communicate as well as women do. Right? It's just something, you know, we're, well, anyway, that's, uh, but projects that I'll mention, uh, I'm involved, I live at Lake Matanta Shores, and uh, last October we, we uh, discussed and started discuss, 
uh, the planning stages of the thing, model railroad. Well, a model railroad. Uh, you know, a lot of guys had a model railroad as, as, a, as a youngster. And we had one of our uh, builders in 1943, he received the model train for Christmas. Well, he still has it, and he donated it to our group. 1943. So he was six years old at the time. So we're building this. And a model railroad project is never finished. It's always going to be tweaked and added and subtracted and so on and so forth. So we're doing that. And I actually started a, uh, a men's shed group at Lake Virginia Shores. And the activity director there said to me when we were setting this up, she said, you know, we need activities to pull people out of their apartments. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll sit there and watch TV all day long. And it's just like the homes here in the Trista as well. Uh, we've had members that came to us and they said, well, my wife said I had to cough. <laughs> well, uh, another project we're working with the uh, Mound of Food Shelf. Mm -hmm. And their goal is to get as much food to as many people as they can. So you're all familiar with these little uh, free libraries? Mm -hmm. We're building food pantries about so wide, so high, for free food. I think we've got about eight different churches lined up. So these are usually uh, stock uh, in the winter and summer by food shop volunteers. So we're doing that. And, that sounds like a great organization. So sounds like a great organization. And I have a question. So just to clarify, so your ask here tonight is that you'd like to have a spot here in Minatrista, potentially somewhere maybe here on camp, our city campus, to host your meetings? Is that correct? Okay. How often do you meet? We have... Uh, I mean, how often would you meet here in Minatrista? We have proposed one week a month at least three months. Okay. So we can get a feel and see if we can gain some members. Okay. So we had proposed on a like a Thursday uh, at ten fifteen and we proposed three days. Okay. Um so I have a question. This would be to staff or to maybe our chief of police. Is it possible that they could meet in our community our our training room over there? That would be would that be an option? Uh, Madam Mayor Council, yes, absolutely, that would be a, an option. We have a number of groups that do that on a fairly regular basis, so that wouldn't be a problem. Would they would they contact um, police department to schedule that then? Yes, just contact our main number at the police department, and uh, our secretaries would be happy to schedule. They can see the schedule for that room, so they can tell you what dates would be available. We have in the past toured the uh, Hennepin County Sheriff's uh, over by the Spring Park, the Orono Police Department, a couple of fire departments. It's really amazing what you, what you learn. Yeah. Uh, the uh, Spring Park Sheriff's Department, they have four drones. I didn't even know they had. Uh, one of them has a heat detector, so if somebody's lost in the woods, they can send out. <coughs> you, can, you can look. Uh, we attach proposed agenda items for Minnetrista. Okay. As well as the agenda items for the last three years. Okay, that's great. Um, and we can certainly. We're willing yeah. to come back. So, uh, counts, yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. Tony. Jerry, I got your name. I'm sorry, what was your name? Lyle. Lyle. Yeah. And uh, do you have a phone number where we can reach you? That's yes. Because I'm going to be having my husband call. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> they have. Claudia, it's we right have their there. numbers okay, here. Okay, wonderful. Yep. Yep. So glad you came. Yeah. Yep. Are, do you have a Facebook page that, um, like, the communities can share, like Woodley Cove? Or? No, we no. We haven't, uh, even though we've been around three years, uh, we're not a 501c3. So we've been trying to work ways we can get contributions. We noted that Bill has a foundation. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Facebook pages are free, and you don't have to be a 501c3, so you just have to find someone to help you set one up. Right. I'm happy to do that. We need sponsored by uh, Gillespie Center. We've got some challenges there. so uh, We've even discussed in the past the idea of having a, a senior drop-in center. This would be a, like a storefront or something like that, and you'd have different, uh, maybe a treadmill, TV, a poker table, you know, I mean a card table. <laughs> uh, and 
for seniors are dropping, just like they, they have with some communities for teens. Well, why not? The Lecture Center is, old, is, I think they close at 4 or 5 in the afternoon, or I don't, know, I don't think they're open on the weekend, so where does the senior go? Right. All right. Well, well, I think just kind of maybe uh, wrapping up, you can look at what we have proposed. We have tried, a part of it is trying to understand also Minatrista, uh, since we have members in a lot of the communities. But we did participate, a part of it is that Jerry mentioned it started in Australia, went through um, Ireland and to the US, and then uh, here in Minnesota, Minnesota Minshed, University of Minnesota, uh, and NIH worked together, collaborated on a, a study because if you're familiar, and we had some speakers in, the suicide rate uh, is, was extremely high or accelerating within Minnesota. So they did a study in 38 communities and found that social interaction helps uh, uh, prevent that, yeah. Really yeah. lacking in a lot right. of communities. And so that's uh, a part of our agenda is also to try to right. find those types of well, I think the first step is, number one, to call our police department, and then they can tell you what the schedule is for that room. So it's a lovely room. It's right next door in our police department. There's uh, bathroom facilities there, too, and it's a very nice uh, room to hold meetings. And then um, if uh, if you have additional information, maybe have a few meetings, see how it goes, and then come back maybe during a work session and kind of report back to us. That might be nice. Okay. So We appreciate it. Your time. Oh, you're welcome. And thank you for coming, and thank you for doing what you do. Thank you. So, thank you. Um, Just one comment. If, yeah. if they get, when they get it scheduled, share it. We can share it. Yes, I see yeah. they have a page on there. Yeah. All right, good. Um, with that, then we'll move on to our consent agenda items. Are there any you wish to remove? All right, so they will consist of consent agenda item number A, which is approve our city council mini meeting minutes from June 5th, 2023, approve our work session meeting minutes from June 26, 2023, C is approve our city council meeting minutes from June 26, 2023, D is approve our temporary liquor license for the Northwest Tonk Alliance at Minnetonka Orchard for August 12th, 2023, E is a resolution to approve claims. F is a resolution to approving the setback variance at 8280 County Road 15. Uh, G is a resolution approving simple subdivision between 1005, 1015, 1025, and 1105 on Sunnyfield Road North. And H is a resolution um, to accept the Centerpoint Energy Safety Grant. Is there a motion to approve consent agenda items A through H? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Lacey. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Vickery. Okay. Um, all those in favor, signify with aye. Aye. All those opposed, motion passes 5-0. So next, we do have a public hearing, and there are so many people here this evening. <laughs> um, but we do have to have this um, cannabis um, business moratorium, and uh, we do have to have a public hearing on that. So I am going to open the public hearing. Or do you want to, is there anything we need to say prior to opening the public hearing? Uh, Madam Mayor, members of the council, I can give you a short introduction if that sure. would help. Okay. Sure. Um, so before you tonight is an interim ordinance that um, would temporarily prohibit the establishment of cannabis businesses within the city. The city council previously adopted at your previous meeting the moratorium regarding the THC products and those types of businesses, those involve the gummies and the, um, the beverages. This will be cannabis businesses. Um, as you know, cannabis recent legislation made cannabis legal in Minnesota. However, um, the state is still in the process of establishing the Office of Cannabis Management, um, hiring those people, and then also establishing regulations regarding cannabis. And we'll be coming out at some point with a proposed model ordinances that city can use cities can use to regulate the time, place, and manner restrictions involving cannabis businesses. So. I think the council at its work session back in June decided that it would be in the city's best interest at this point to um, adopt this moratorium on cannabis businesses until the state can get the Office of Cannabis Management up and running. The regulations can be adopted by the state 
and there will be a proposed model ordinance for the city to take a look at, and then it can establish its time, place, and manner regulations. At that point, the city can remove the moratorium. The city is authorized to have a lengthier moratorium than normal. Usually, the city can only adopt a 12-month moratorium. This one can go until January 1st of 2025. Um, it can be removed earlier than that if we decide that um, we have the regulations in place that are needed by the city to regulate time, place, and manner uh, restrictions with respect to cannabis businesses. So tonight this will put this into place and it will be in effect till January 1st, 2025. Okay. And I believe it exempts the um, cannabis for um, medicinal purposes, correct? correct? Okay, thank you. All right. Um, any questions of staff? None. I, we've talked about this, so we're pretty. So I will open up the public hearing. If anybody is here this evening that wishes to speak for or against this um, more um, ordinance um, moratorium, can do so now. Um, there's there's nobody here, I guess. So I'm going to close the public hearing at this time and take it back to council. Council is. Uh, there a motion to uh, approve the interim ordinance number 484, authorizing a study and imposing a moratorium on the operation of cannabis businesses within the city of Minnetrista. So moved. Thank you, Ms. Lacey. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Refkin. All those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes 5-0. And then next is authorizing publication of interim ordinance number 484 by title and summary. Is there a motion to that effect? So moved. Thank you, Ms. Refkin. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Vickery. All those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion passes 5-0. So that concludes our public hearings this evening. We'll move on to our business items. Our, our one and only business item this evening is to accept quotes and award the contract for the 23 sanitary sewer replacement project. I believe that's Ms. Falski. Thank you, Mayor Whalen, members of council. Uh, before you this evening is an item that you've seen before back in April. Um, to give a brief history, there's a sanitary sewer in the Hunter's Crest neighborhood just over on Glacier Court um, that is in need of some replacement. And we originally quoted it early in the in the bidding season, hoping to attract, um, we, we sent it out to some contractors, uh, hoping to, to get some interest. Um, and we received one quote at that time, it was over budget. Um, so we hit pause on that and opted to put this on Quest CDN, which is um, a, an advertisement um, that all contractors are able to see um, and, and do it late in the bidding season so that as contractors have filled up um, their major work uh, for the season, um, this would be a nice little filler project for them. So I'm pleased to share with the council that we... we we were successful in generating more interest. We got uh, seven quotes included in the packet on page 79. And um, we, uh, you'll see quite a range in, in, the, in the quotes. And I think one of the things that, um, you know, when I take a look at this, we, we see a couple, couple folks, actually three folks here that I, I haven't worked with previously. Um, so we saw some smaller contractors that were looking at this work, which um, which provided some lower quotes than some of these larger companies that we typically are working with. Um, so the low quote for this uh, for this work is eleven and underground at forty nine thousand five hundred twenty four dollars and eleven cents. Um, since we have not worked with Lebanon in the past, we did reach out uh, asking for references, and we did hear back from let's see five. Um, five folks uh, ranging from um, excavating companies, an engineering firm, other contractors um, that have all supported that uh, this company has the, the resources to do the work, um, that they've been good to work with, um, have the, um, you know, as, as far as uh, workmanship is concerned, they have no issues with that. Um, and it really spoke very positively of, of this contractor. So I'm pleased to share that with the council. Um, this is a smaller project, so we don't anticipate that this would take very long, but we did provide um, a completion date of October 30th. Um, at this point, I'm not certain what uh, the, the contractor's time frame would be for this. I can certainly um, share that at a future meeting if council would like to um, have something on the record as far as the timeliness of that. Um, but there's just a, a couple of residents next door to them 
uh, where this project is proposed to take place. Uh, so we'll certainly be in contact with them. So we anticipate that this contractor would be able to get in um, and quickly make the repairs and, and uh, button up the project there. Uh, one item that I would like to um, make note of in the packet on, uh, let's see here, page 80, is that the, um, the project funding would be through the sewer maintenance fund. Um, there's a typo in the in the council mm -hmm. memo there, but um, like I said, we're we're under budget for this um, on this quote. Uh, we were glad to get such interest in the project. We've included a summary of the bids uh, for the council packet, and we are recommending that the council award the contract um, and adopt the resolution as attached. Okay, thank you, uh, council. Any questions for Ms. Um, Posty? It says engineer's opinion of cost. Mm -hmm. It's just what. WSB thought it would cost that much? Correct. So, um, uh, Mayor Whalen, if I may answer Council Member Lacey's question. So, when, when we look at um, these types of projects, we take a look at um, bids that we've received for all different types of projects and take, you know, take a look at what's the average, that sort of thing, and we come up with an opinion of what we think it would cost. And so, that's based on um, other projects um, of similar size. Um, that's how we arrived at that. At, that um, number and so we provide that to staff and council to get an idea of what we would be looking at for budget for this type of work thank you okay any other questions well yeah yeah to, to build on that so if you you think it's going to cost 72 9 and 56. they came in at 49 5 um, that's right a large difference um, mayor we're going to get the right quality oh, I think it's 53. It's Oh, fifty six. Yeah. <laughs> if, if I may answer, um, that that's a that's a good question. And um, when we look at there's there's two costs associated with with projects like this. So there's the construction cost, which um, the, the forty nine five quote that we got from Lebanon. Um, our opinion of that of the construction cost is fifty six thousand. The 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 seven the other number. Um, the 70 plus thousand that includes the indirect fees so the fees associated with the engineering design the bidding administration and then construction administration as well so um, there's kind of two components and, and in the future I think we should do a better job about um, outlining Breaking how we up. arrive at that yeah. 73,000 yeah. that's, that's yeah. a good question so in essence um, the 49 is is the, the difference between the 56 yeah. estimate yeah. Correct. and the 49 Correct. or 53, whatever it was. Yeah. So the total project will probably be like 60, 65,000, right? I'm here from adding in. Am I doing that right? I mean, the, mm -hmm. the yes. Is, yeah. yeah. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. We would, so we, we would quite frankly be looking at about a $6,500 um, uh, estimated savings on the project based on the low uh, mm -hmm. quote for this project. Okay. <coughs> okay. Any other questions? All right. And is, um, if there's not, um, is there then a motion to, um, a, re a motion to approve and accept the quote for, from Levanen Underground LLC and awarding the contract for the 23 sanitary sewer replacement project? And this would be city project number 04 23. Thank you, Mr. Vickery. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Refkin. Any further questions? Hearing none, all those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes 5-0. So that concludes our business items, and we'll move on to administrative items, staff reports. We're going to start with Mr. Peters with our public works director, um, Jean Lanier Park. Upgrade, update. Uh, Madam Mayor, Council, yes. Um, wish I had better news for you. This part should be almost wrapped up by now, but uh, we're about four weeks behind due to a watershed issue with the new huge parking lot that we put in there all three spots it triggered um some wetland uh, issues from the watershed district which um we've been battling with them for quite a while um the water that has gone to the same spot for the last 70 years under the road to our side of the of 44 that we own which is a non-outlet area um was a major concern for them um they were worried about flow rate um, and uh, the, the um, amount of water and the flow rate out of there. Um, WSB has worked to try to appease them. We have come up with a solution now. Um, the first solution for them was a $70,000 fix, and 
Um, Bob Slipka, who is our um, WSB designer for this, was absolutely not. I mean, this is ridiculous for a three-spot lot. We have worked it out. Uh, we are finalizing that. We ended up, uh, we'll be about 5000 over budget because of this um, with the watershed district because there's that much. Um, unfortunately, um, but the good news is we did send it out for bid right away. We will be bringing that back for approval. Um, the original estimate for the whole project was about 380,000. Um, we sent it out for all the work and, um, it came that the playground, I believe was 75,000 out of that. Um, and the bids came in. We had 10 different contractors been out, which was great. That's for the trail work, the parking lot work, um, and the uh, installation of the playground uh, containers themselves. Uh, we had 10 contractors. They ranged from a little under 200000 almost 340000 um, So SunRam Construction, you'll see, will be um, be awarding the contract. They're the ones that did the mor on Morning View. They did both the Hoffman side and the um, Maslowski projects there. Oh, yeah. And mm -hmm. then also... Yeah. Uh, they did a huge watershed project behind the lift station two off of County Road 110 North. So we're familiar with the work. We're really happy that they've got it. Um, the gentleman that has been doing it the last couple of years took second, unfortunately, but um, so be it. But you will see that coming at the next council. We'll have everything ready for approval for that next meeting. Um, the difference in the pricing, uh, the big factor is that we did a lot of stuff in-house. So yeah, right. we did all the tree removals, the parking lot prep. Uh, we, we still have the court to remove uh, and the trail, but we have left that all in there until we're prepped and ready to go. So, so once it's just... awarded, we'll get a con we'll get a uh, schedule. We'll get a pre-con meeting set up right. with them, get a schedule, know uh, what's going to happen. We're, I'm going to push them to try to get in here ASAP to get it done. Our part, uh, the playground equipment's been here for two oh, and a half yeah. months. Gary, does this include, so they're going to do the surfacing of the um, parking area, the trails, and the tennis court? Correct. Okay. Yep. Okay. And uh, so the, what you see, there will be the exact same thing on the court. It'll be a tennis court with two pickleball yep. courts on each side. We are adding a basketball hoop out there. So um, one little caveat that was added on, we are going to, uh, we added on an alternate for to continue the trail all the way down through till Trillium. Um, if we're going to redo the whole trail through there, it did not make sense not to do that section. So okay. we'll do all the removals of that too as well. So the bid alternate, I think, was about 3500 almost, but it'll be a lot less because we're doing the, the removal. So, but that'll be coming. So hopefully um, we'll get back on schedule and get in and uh, get done here. I mean, I know that everybody's kind of excited to see it get done. We've oh, been corresponding, sure. I have been corresponding with the Homeowner Association out there with the president and stuff. And he's been relaying a lot of messages back and forth. But it's surprising how many people from the um, Lakeview uh, neighborhood mm -hmm. and from Hermitage use that as well. So, right. yeah. Um, yeah. It's surprising how many people are kind of paying attention to that. So we'll, I will have Allie pull stuff as we go, as the, as the schedule is done, so people can kind of, you know, do it. Um, as far as grants go, um, you know, was discussing um, – with Jasper here, there's no playground um, redos in the next four to five years. We're pretty much caught up on our stuff here. The next one I think will be probably looking at doing Linden Park. That'll be due because that'll be pushing 25 years old. So that'll be probably the next one on the horizon. But right now we have nothing uh, for that. So um, as so far as... Would the Hennepin County grant, um, this is the one, you know, I was looking at, does that also include um, facilities? So, like, if we wanted to add, I don't know, a skating rink or a basketball court or something like that, doesn't there, that grant? There is two of them out there. There's one for, I think, believe there's actually three of them, but I believe one is for facilities, one is for sporting equipment, and one is for playgrounds. Right. So, um, we, we can look at, I mean, one mind. of the big things that, we might want to start considering is what do we want to do with the baseball field at Lyle? Do we want to, you know, I know um, Waconia education is using that for both. I believe it's baseball, softball and for the kids. And is it lacrosse still going on out there? Mm -hmm. So one thing we might want to look at is do we want to add, you know, we did some fence work out there. We've done some other improvements. Do we want to start thinking about adding some bleachers out there or something like that? We can possibly go through the grant to do right. that. Right. That's those are things I would do the grant. Uh, yep. apply yeah. Yeah. And grant. that's, and that we can do that. And that I believe is for that is fall. Is that correct? Jasper was for the, the that type of stuff. Playgrounds are spring. I think the other stuff is fall, fall bidding for spring work. Right. 
I Correct. believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So spring is equipment and playground grants. Fall is equipment and facility grants. Well, the other thing is Lyle Park needs a playground too. So eventually, so that might also be. Um, we should keep our eye on that for the grant for that grant opportunity. And one thing we can look at too, um, and I don't know how it actually works, but I know Minnesota Wisconsin Playgrounds who bids a lot of our stuff in the fall. I should say towards the end of the year, they do a kind of a clearinghouse sale uh, where they do about a discount on their stuff. I'm sure a lot of other companies do that, too. So if we are going to plan on doing something out there, it might be cost effective to look and say, hey, you know, who's out there? Who's giving deals at the end of the year Mm -hmm. to plan for the following year to do work out there? So I I don't know what the appetite is and how fast you want to do something like that, because That'll be a pretty good size undertaking out there for what yeah, it would be. What was looking out there? I mean, um, you know. So I, I guess we got to kind of you know play by ear and see what you guys want to do. So okay, but we need just keep that in mind because we should start planning for that. I mean, for for things like that, so we can get ahead of the game versus you know ahead of the ball. Okay, sounds good. What was the solution with the watershed district? What's that? What's the solution? What? Um, we are putting in a um, so basically. <laughs> We took the parking lot a little bit more. We're redoing the curb wind and adding a small catch basin structure with a uh, slow release outlet into the ditch. Um, I suggest that we just take and put all the uh, and fill the ditch with riprap, but they would not allow that, being that it's Hennepin County ditch. And I'm like, I can get approval for that, not a problem. But it's it's worked out. I mean, it is going to be a little bit more cost, and it's in the it, we have that factored in to the pricing. But yeah, it's just been a it's been a headache. Okay, thank you, Gary. <laughs> All right, um, next we have uh, Chief. Yes, thank you, Madam Mayor, Council. Uh, once again, National Night Out is quickly approaching. Uh, it's on Tuesday, August first. This year, we currently have 18 parties, but we typically see a couple more pop up as we get closer to that date. So um, busy schedule. Uh, Staff is busy planning for all of that. Uh, Hopefully, we have great weather. If you're interested in riding along with an officer, feel free to let me know, and we'll go ahead and schedule that for you. Just uh, as I say every year, keep in mind that our officers are scheduled pretty tightly, and uh, they get their grouping of parties. They can't skip around too much um, because we have. uh, it's really hard to to get someone to every party. Mm -hmm. So we try really hard to do that. Um, And so everybody's assigned a block of parties and they have to keep that schedule fairly strictly to get to all of them. So if you're more interested in going to select parties, it's probably better to go on your own. But if you'd like to come and ride along, you're always welcome to do that. So, and then the only other announcement I have is uh, tomorrow morning we have our police advisory committee meeting. Yep, I will, Jasper and I will be there. Yep. Very okay. good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, and I will be going out with you on National Night Out. Yes. Yep. Okay. I got you down. On and uh, and Mc, McGregor, no, what's McGrath? McGrath. Officer McGrath. We are still trying to work out our McGrath schedule this year. McGrath. We're going to have two of them because they're so popular. Yes. Uh, last year we were really short staffed, so it was hard to do. But it, there's still a possibility that we might have McGrath with us again. Okay. All so right. We'll see. Uh-huh. Woodland Cove. Woodland Cove. All right. <laughs> All right, and then we have um, our uh, city engineer, Allison, again, road project update. Thank you, Mayor Whelan, Council. Um, Just an update, so we have three projects going this year. Uh, First one I'd like to touch on is the overlay project. Uh, We have Kings Point Road was paved some time ago. Uh, Hunter's Trail is now paved. Uh, We had uh, some members here in the audience for the work session indicating that uh, paving started in Turtle Creek today. And I'm not sure where they're headed after Turtle Creek, but um, rest assured they're, they're getting out to, to pave um, between uh, Sunny Brook and Painter's Creek up um, in the north area. So we'll get be getting that one wrapped up. Um, been a lot of, you know, talking to residents with restoration and irrigation systems and that sort of thing. Is, um, you know, through the years, a lot of things end up in the right of way. So... Um, it's an, un- an unfortunate thing that we have to deal with, but um, I think that residents will be happy with the, the paved surface out there. Uh, the next project I'd like to give an update on is the reclamation project on the very north end of town up near Burl Oaks Golf Course. Uh, so this one, it was a reclamation project uh, for the majority of the work through there uh, with two layers of pavement going in. 
Um, the first layer has gone in on North Arm, um, and they were preparing Timber Trail um, and, um, or sorry, Trails End and, and Timber Trail uh, to get that paved here. So I would expect that they're going to get that first layer on um, here tomorrow and get some, and then they'll, you know, they'll start on some restoration work and get that second layer pavement in there. So right now residents will experience, um, there'll still be a little lip from the, the driveway um, when, when we just have that first layer in there. So they'll still feel a bump, but um, I was out there earlier and it's, it's nice and smooth out there. So happy with that one. Um, the other, the last project I'd like to speak of is the reconstruction project. Uh, the first phase, as of last week, the, con the contractor had installed about half the water services. Um, so once, uh, once they get finished with that, um, it will be next, starting next week, the, um, the subcontractor will be coming in to install the sand and gravel for, to start building the road back up. And then we'll get the curb in there and, and uh, get it ready for paving. So the paving will probably be near um, early part of August. And then they'll be removing, um, doing the removals in the fate, what, we, what we're calling Phase C, which is down on the south end of the project, Westwood Drive and Westwood Avenue. Um, start doing that this week and reclaiming the roads. So with this project at the outset, um, Center Point Energy had gone in ahead of the, of the city's contractor to replace the gas main, and they were delayed getting out of there, which of course then delayed the city's contractor. So, an effort to try to get this project back on schedule, because um, you know the end goal is we want to have this project buttoned up by the fall. Um, so, the contractor indicated that they have another utility crew available that they'd like to bring on the project. So, that was good news for everyone. Uh, so, right now they're taking a look at. Um, what they would be able to accommodate for temporary water services, and then we'll um, establish what that um, additional uh, utility crew could work on so we can keep this project moving and keep going with this one so we can get this, like I said, the goal is to get this one. Uh, we want to get it buttoned up before winter. Yeah, um, really? so So anyway, uh, <laughs> as I said, we're, things are progressing well. Um, happy to report You know, two of the three projects will be um, done here in short order. And I want to go on record saying that uh, for the North Arm Project, the people who have worked there have been efficient, they've been polite and courteous, they've helped us get in and out on a regular basis. I can't say enough good, and my neighbors can't say enough good, and we're very happy it's being done the way it's being done. They, they, are, they are probably the best. Even just with the first yeah. lift. Yeah. 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 yeah, they are probably the best contractor I think I've ever worked with, really. I mean, as it comes to it, I mean, they really turned out great. Good. Which yeah. They've bent over backwards for residents and done extra stuff. I mean, it's it's really been something. Um, the contractor on that project is Aztec, so um, I think this was their first their first one first in Minatrista. project for Minatrista, yeah. but they certainly have been in the metro area doing project work like this. Well, hopefully they'll. Be They've done seal projects. coating and stuff here in the Correct. past and crack filling, yeah. but yeah, it's their yeah. first big project. Mm -hmm. but. All right, good to know. Any other questions or comments? Good. Um, we'll go to um, any other staff. Okay. Um, with that, we'll go on to uh, council reports. I'll start with uh, Ms. Lacey. Anything? Oh. Yeah, well, I attended the um, Planning Commission meeting, and they just were discussing some of the things that we approved today. Uh, some, uh, I'm sorry. I'm variance of setbacks. Yes, variance of and setbacks. Lot Thank you. Adjustments. Um, yeah. nothing, nothing crazy all <laughs> passed. And uh, what we had a long discussion about was traffic on seven and so um, I had mentioned that um, the highway seven safety coalition safety coalition and um, that they have they're working on it there'll be another report coming they wanted to be included on that report they wanted to see that they felt that the uh, the, Roundabout. Uh, Ron, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, we, we get it. <laughs> uh, we're dangerous. And we kind of had an open discussion about that. And um, they said, you know, are we in um, constant contact with MnDOT? And I talked to Jasper, and he said, yes, we have a great relationship with them. And uh, so they just wanted to be kept more in the loop. And so I said I would pass that on to the council. Thank you. Um, and that was really all. That happened there. Um, I spoke with the um, 
kind of marketing director of the West Tonka, um, the WCC, and her name is Betsy Brady. They've been really busy with the um, uh, Spirit of the Lakes Festival that just ended, but they're coming up on another festival that's going to take place um, also at the Mound Beach on Cooks Bay, and they were wondering if Minatrista uh, Police Department might be interested in sending someone to talk about the importance of um, putting chips in your pets and what we would do with lost pets. And I said I didn't know if that was a big issue in Minatrista. But well, you'd have to talk to the chief on that. <laughs> talk to the chief about that. Um, you know, they, they are having a canine unit come. That's always very popular. But they they thought, you know, out here in Minatrista, maybe we would maybe want to talk to the community about how, how it's important to put chips in your dog. So mm-hmm. I'm just passing that on to you. Okay. Sure. Right. Madam Mayor and Council, I'd, we'd certainly be happy to uh, participate if, if uh, there's a, a request. Uh, yeah. If they just want to reach out to us, we can figure out maybe who the most appropriate person to do that would be and, and uh, see if that we can make it work. That would be wonderful. Uh, it is going to be, I believe, on August 13th, but I'll make sure to get that information to you. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. And contact information, Contact too. information. So, okay. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Chief. Welcome. Peter, anything? Nothing to report. Okay. Um, Gillespie Center um, has had a lot of activity, and right now they have two part-time positions that are actually open, one for an event coordinator and one for a marketing person. Um, they're trying uh, as much as they can uh, to get the word out that they want to get the rentals to up back to the pre-COVID levels that they had before, mm-hmm. and that will help um, help everything at the Gillespie Center. Yeah. Yeah, and good job. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for being on that board. Thank you. All right. Um, I attended the personal committee meeting today with Lisa, Jasper, Brian, and Allie to discuss the public works contracts. Um, I will be attending the planning commission meeting on Monday. I'm assuming you still need me. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll be attending the Mount Fire meeting with Jasper on the 27th. And then I was hoping that we could direct staff to review the tree ordinance that we have, where we, specifically the part where we allow the builders um, to get a reduction in the fees they pay to keep designated trees. Um, I've noticed, at least in Woodland Cove, that we've probably allowed the builders to keep these trees and the homeowners come in and take them down. So maybe looking into having a tree preservation aspect to it, where if they do take one of those down, they Just replace it with something else. I think, I think that's part of the ordinance, isn't it? Or am I mistaken? But I'm, we can. But I think I'm not you're right. Sure, but. Yeah. So well, what we'll do, I, and you can answer this. But what we'll do is um, put session. this on a work session, and then we can review okay. it. But okay. Sure. But if you want to answer it now, you can. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, so I think what. Uh, she's referring to is um, that we have the option to put we'd have to put easements over the top of those trees in order to okay. do that so we, we could we have the mechanisms in order to do that so if there's a future development where there's some significant trees that we want to ensure that get saved yeah um, as we've done in other developments Palmer right. Point you know and yeah. Hermitage Shores there's a few where we do have tree preservation ordinances so there's an easement that goes over the top. Uh, okay. We do have that ability to, okay. to do that. Well, let's um, put that on, if that's okay with council. You want to put it on a work session? Then sure. Future? Yep, yep. Sounds whenever. good. Thank you. That's it. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, yep. Attended the personnel committee meeting. Um, I will be attending National Night Out with the chief. I'm looking forward to that. It's always good to connect with residents. Um, and then there is no Northwest League for July and August, so I'll go. I'll be attending again in uh, September. And then also on the 27th, I think Jasper will be there um, for the groundbreaking for the our very first apartment building in Minatrista. Yeah, I believe. Yeah. So, cool. yeah. So that's all I have for now, and I think we're good to go. If you want to sit here any longer, we can. But if not. <laughs> Thank you. A motion to adjourn has been made. Is there a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Lacey. Uh, Kathleen made that, and Ms. Lacey seconded that. All those in favor signify with aye. 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 All those opposed, motion passes. All right.